All right, ready to get started. Let's let's do this. Um, have you? How many? How many? How many of you guys have actually used Illustrator before? You okay, Kaiza? You you've used Illustrator before? No one else has used Illustrator before. That didn't raise their hand. You no know, fundamentals. Okay, cool. Well, hopefully, my goal at the end of this, you'll know a little bit more of Illustrator. But the ultimate goal is that you'll you'll create some sort of logo i.e. monogram for yourself. How many of you actually have created some sort of identity or logo for yourselves? Not yet, so this, this will be an opportunity you can actually do that. So that's the goal at the end of this, you'll have something to walk away with. If not, then you'll, just, you'll have some kind of foundation to build off of and you can go back home and spend more time on this. So um, what we're gonna do, uh, I guess the, 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 this workshop, is called Brand Yourself. It's around creating some sort of logo identity for yourself, but we want to focus that on a specific type of logo called a monogram logo. So, um, and by the way, this is just some information. Um, you guys can tweet me, catch me on LinkedIn. Um, I'll, I can give you my email address as well if you have any questions at all uh, on anything that we do or any topics. Um, feel free to just reach out to me. So, what are monograms? Does anybody know what a monogram is? Or have an idea? You do? Okay, what is it? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's basically, um, it's basically a, a initials that combine to form some sort of motif uh, or logo. So I'll, I'll give you an example of them. It's you know, a, like a symbol, right? So you recognize these brands? You know these brands? So these are all monograms. But they're also initials for, well, it's so, so funny because they're all fashion. The thing with fashion, um, the reason why brands use monograms on all of their, uh, their merchandise is because of competition. And it's very easy to steal someone's designs, but if you have your monogram or logo applied to those designs, you can't, you can't steal that. So Michael Kors, Calvin Klein, and Louis Vuitton. Very cool. So now there's a difference between a logo and a monogram. And um, I won't go into this whole ex explanation, but um, basically a monogram can be a logo, but a logo can't be a monogram. And here's a, a, a sample of a, a nice monogram that's also a logo. And then here's an example of a logo that's not a monogram. It's, just, it's purely a logo. It's a combination of a symbol and a word mark. So I'm gonna give I'm gonna show you some examples of famous monograms. Do you recognize these two? <laughs> these are these are my monograms, okay? <laughs> All right. So I, I I back in the day I I first created this one. Uh, my initials are A W. So I kind of created this one. I thought it was kind of cool. Um, and then this is my new one. It's like really abstract. Um, it's it reminds me of like Adidas with the three stripes, um, just very modern. So, um, and I created this, and I, and I created both of these based off of fonts, fonts. Because we'll, we'll be manipulating fonts to create our monograms. But anyways, these are some famous monograms. Do you guys recognize some of these? Some of these, I, I still, do we know what that one is? Yeah. What is it? Oh, Roger Federer. Very cool monogram. So you can see that on Roger Federer's monogram that it's based off of fonts. It's an R, a letter R and a nice uh, letter F. These are serif fonts that were manipulated to make that. And I think that's great. Tiger Woods, I think, is really cool. Um, we all know like the Yankees, the White Sox, uh, Volkswagen. Vera Wang, I thought, is really cool. Does anybody have VW? <laughs> Initials. Um, this is Banana Republic. You notice what they're doing here with the B. Um, they've they've flipped it. They've reversed it, which is kind of cool. You can you can also do that. Um, Gucci, Givenchy with the G's. I think that's really cool. Um, one of the things to keep in mind. Do we have a marker here? You'll also notice, and this goes into like logo design theory that usually when you're creating a logo, and it's always nice to start with the name of the company or the brand, which is important, 
but really when you're creating a logo or a monogram for example you'll notice that there's shapes there's shapes because it's easier for uh, before even before color and notice everything is in black and white because like Design 101 is you never design anything in color. If it doesn't work in black and white, it won't work at all. So you leave color to the end. Um, so, but before you even start with color, before you even start with the name, start with a shape. So if you were to just looking at a, a, a particular shape, would you be able to know what the logo is? Like for example, do, does anybody know what, like, I mean, it's so broad because shape, like if you were to do a circle, yeah, it could be a million. But there could be some interesting shapes that may stand out. Does anybody know like what that logo could be? It's a shape. Very good. All right, you're on it. You're on it. All right, that's very good. So example, like oh, Superman. I just saw the shape. Um, when I see, if you see a circle, it could be anything, right? But then if I go, does anybody know that one? Target. Boom. Target. You know, same. That was a great logo. Um, anyways. I don't want to go on a tangent. So um, what's next? Quick uh, five things to keep in mind when you're designing your monogram. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Um, relevancy. It should be something also meaningful to you. Um, uh, uh, the the t-shirt you're wearing back there, Hell's Kitchen, really cool. I dig it. Um, that, that essentially could be a monogram, but I like the pitchfork. So that's relevant to the name of Hell's Kitchen. So that's just one example. Great, great shirt for the class. That's awesome. Uh, memorability also helps with memorability because you want to recall something. So usually one and three are kind of the same. If you keep it simple, it's easy to recall. Um, scalability is huge because you're going to be creating something that might be seen on a business card, really small, or might be seen large on a website. Or even like if you want to use your logo on your Instagram profile picture, really small. So it has to be scalable. Um, and distinctiveness is also kind of uh, similar to um, being relevant, but something that kind of stands out. Um, all right. So, and just remember, you know, you'll, you'll be hearing this in a, in a lot of your classes. The logo is not your brand, but it's also important that it's going to be a critical key element to your brand because it's going to be seen everywhere. So, um, you know, make sure you put a lot of thought behind it. Um, I wanted to give you some links to some websites that you could visit. Um, myfonts.com, thefont.com, font squirrel, Adobe type kit, which you should already have access to. And then this is another cool website. These are all typography websites that you can browse um, fonts and, and you can also test when we go there um, which I think we should do yes let's do it let me go to the internet here no 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 is that is this the right website yeah. yes Okay, so um, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you an example of this is one of the websites, and look, there's tons of fonts. Um, we let's find. Let's see. I'm going to jump. I'm kind of jumping to a particular font I like. So let's say this is an example of a font that we like. It's called F37 Bella, right? So you can go to Typesetter, and we'll, we'll take Kaiser for example, and let, we'll pick, oh, that looks cool. We like that, right? Now here's the thing. You could, you could buy the font, which you know I do because you can use it um, across the board, but for purposes of today, if you guys see a font on some of the sites that requires you to buy it, we can also... We can trace it, we can manipulate it in Illustrator. Uh, for example, so if I just take this image, oh, where, I didn't save the image, let me save the image. Take the image, right click on the image and just hit save image as, and just save as Kaiser. 
and I'll take it in Illustrator. And now I have it in Illustrator, right? So I can, there's, there's a cool feature in Illustrator called uh, Live Trace. And let me see here. Where is Live Trace? I'm not seeing it here, let's see. Oh, here it is. Image trace. What is that again? It's object, image trace, and you hit make. Cool. So I'll show you how to do that, but and, and we'll, we'll, we'll do that later, but I just wanna basically demonstrate for you what happens when you do that because you can manipulate it so kaiza for example with her logo she took that font and then she manipulated it to make uh, her logo now the reason why i'm i'm showing you this as an example because a lot of you may not want to create a monogram based on your initials so if you feel like you just want to create a logo on your name you could also do that that's totally fine so i'm just showing you an example but i i will personally help you create these so if you need help, you know, tracing a font uh, or creating a monogram, um, we, I'll, I'll show you how to do that. And then you can apply it to her business cards. So she's creating her identity on that. And you guys will need business cards at some point. So you should definitely put that logo on the, on the business cards. Monogram Project is a very cool website. I want you guys to spend like at least 10 minutes, 5 to 10 minutes uh, going through that website to get you guys some inspiration on monograms. So go to monogramproject.com and you'll see that. And then, um, so spend 10 minutes going through monogram project um, and then I want you to grab that, your, your pencil and your paper and then just start sketching ideas with your initials for monograms and for logos. And then, after about 10, 15 minutes of that, we'll spend the rest of the time just creating an illustrator. Um, so what you'll do is you'll find, you'll find either a font that you like on one of those websites. Um, you guys were, could also use Adobe Typekit. Um, go, through, go to Adobe, Adobe Type, Typekit and search fonts, and then make sure you install that in Illustrator. Um, and then we'll start manipulating from there. So essentially what you want to do when you start manipulating your, your fonts, um, let me know, I'll come, I'll come and help you, but essentially you want to start working with your initials and then you want to start creating those, those objects. Okay, so does anybody have any questions? Yes. Um, is it, this, or do you like download the nap, the nap, or do you like just get um, like a? It's a. It is a website. Oh, okay, so it's just this. Okay. No, yeah, this is an Adobe Type Kit. Oh. Is it Adobe Type Kit? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Try oh. try to go to the, the website Adobe Type Kit. No. Typekit.com. That's it. Typekit.com. Type okay, thank you. And you have to be signed in. Yeah, I am. You're signed in? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. True. So if you go to typekit.com, that's another website to find your fonts. But I don't know, you guys might have some cool fonts already installed in your Adobe Illustrator. So if you already have fonts installed there, then you can, you can use those fonts. Any any other questions? Do you guys want to create a monogram or create a logo with your name? Logo with your name? I mean, if you just have a name like Freddie, could be a nice brand, Freddie. But F N. So I guess, yeah, let's, um, 
Start sketching ideas. If you went to the Monogram Project website, you'll get a lot of inspiration. But I really wanted you guys to just start sketching because the idea is before you jump on a computer and start creating things in Illustrator, you should just kind of like draw things. Um, and you just kind of get ideas. The, the, if you're really good at drawing and you get it pretty accurate to the, what you want, you can take a picture of it and then you can bring that into Illustrator and then I can show you through live trace, you can actually trace whatever you draw uh, on the computer. Now, I'm trying to figure out something here. Um, view. Object land trust. Aha. Okay, um, if you guys, let me know when you guys start getting into uh, Illustrator and you start opening up the software, because I want to show you how to arrange your, uh, oh, it's, it's here. sketch and, and get ideas.
tracing that is, I'm going to sharpen this clicker to trace it. I'll trace it in the picture. I'm going to need an illustrator. Oh, I'll make it. Oh, cool. I'm going to need an See how it not getting bigger? So we can do that and then take a picture of it. Oh, perfect. You can you can like you can you can somehow whatever photo you take, if you airdrop it to your computer or email it to yourself, mm -hmm. get it online and bring it in this room. How you doing? See, the thing is, sometimes like modelings, I, I think it's cool to have the same modeling now. It looks like almost like that looks like a ribbon. How you doing? Chinese symbol? That works. Is that your is that your initials? What which one is it? Is that character right there? Yeah, you like this. You type that? Different, different. Okay. Yeah, I see like this like basic into square. It's cool. It's very cool. Very cool. Okay, so you have Illustrator, right? Yeah. This is a font you type? Yeah. Okay. Copy copy that? Which one? Which one? I don't know which one you like. They're all cool, but I like the first one. And then I copy it? Copy it? And then start it. We're, 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 we're going to okay. do that. Okay. Me to sweet here, that's cool too. But I think you use it on the channel. So you're here, you're here on a my box. So the cool time is.
you do the same thing as I did. You good? Oh, you are you in the room? No way. You still in the still in my logo? All right, guys. I, I think everyone's got a great, well-rounded idea of what we're doing. What you guys are gonna do? A couple of things. Let me show you right now. So, um, first things first. Let's try TypeKit. Um, so we'll go to TypeKit.com. And I want to show you if you guys want to preview, you want to search TypeKit. So let's just say we want to go sans serif. And I want to preview my initials. Um, something that looks cool. Maybe this one, Lithos. Now I'm not signed in here, but if you're signed in, you you'll see this green button on the right side that says sync. If you're signed into your Adobe account, click that and it'll sync to your Adobe account. So when you go to Illustrator and you are looking for fonts, you'll see it in the font list and I'll show you where that is, but you'll see it there. Now, a lot of you guys might already have some cool fonts already installed. So if you just want to look through the fonts that you already have in Illustrator, that's, that's cool too. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, second thing is, um, remember we were, we kind of like took the image of Kaiser's name from that website. We downloaded it, saved it to our computer. So we want to open that up in Illustrator. So if you have uh, an image, you'll right click on that image. You'll so open with Adobe Illustrator. And here it is, here, here's her name, right? And that is just, just an image. But in Illustrator, I wanna make it an object. So I, I was telling you about tracing things. You could, in Illustrator, if you have a black and white image, you can trace it to turn it into an object. I'm gonna show you how to do that really quickly. You click the image, and if you guys want to do that, because some of you might want to do your name and not do a monogram, if you're using an image. Uh, okay, everyone open up Illustrator, just so you have Illustrator. Um, open up the file that um, I gave you called Logo Identity Stationery, because what I did there was I put together an entire stationery set for you guys to... Uh, apply your logo to, business cards, letterhead, right? So we're gonna pretty much make Kaiser's um, stationery real quick based off this, this image. And then I'm also gonna show you how to do it as a monogram too. So does everybody have the file open? Okay, cool. So um, if you have an image, I can drag this image, I could literally just click on the image I can drag it to that file and drop it, okay? We go to Window, go to Window Workspace, right here. Click Tracing, okay? So now on the very top, you'll see this button here that says Image Trace. So with this photo selected, this image selected, I'll click Image Trace. Now I just traced the image, so I'm gonna hit Expand, and I have my object, but I'm not done because I need to get rid of this white. So all I'm going to do is take the white arrow, just select this white part that I don't need, and hit delete. Now that's gone. So now I have my object. So I'm going to click back to the black arrow. Now the black arrow means that we select everything. The white arrow means you select just one part of something. Um, everyone should open up their layers panel, so go to window layers. Do you see a little panel, panel with layers? Okay, so there's three layers, template, your design, and background. Um, make sure that you're working off of your design, not template. 
And you're going to say, well, how do I work off that? So for example, if I was working off, uh, this is my, this is Kaizo's logo right here. You see that template layer is highlighted and you're going to see a blue little box on the right side of the, of that uh, panel. I'm just going to literally hold, click and hold and drag it down to the layer below. Now you see that this layer is, is highlighted. So all I can do is I can actually with the little eye icon to the left of the layer panel, turn off template. So now I'm working on just my design. And the reason why we do that is because look, now we have blank canvas to work with. This template turn on and off is just to guide you. It's just to guide you. Okay. So turn it on and off to see if you're doing something right. So now I got my logo here and um, now I can begin to apply it to other areas. So uh, what I would do is I would, um, I would copy this object and I would paste it. So now I have two and drag it to my black and then I would want to uh, make it white. So I, I click the color box and I drag to white. I hit OK. Now I have two. So now I got my black version. I got my white version. Okay. So this is, this is basically how we're manipulating an image and we're creating a logo out of it. So let's just say um, I want to do my monograms. Let's, we're, we're starting over. We're, we're going to start on the design. We're going to start on the design. So make sure that you're cl you've clicked on the layer that says your design, not template. Because we got a good idea of the template there. So if I want to create, if I want to start with a font, I'm going to type my my initials. So on the left side here, in the left in the panel tool, look for the icon with the T. See that the T? Click that. And I just click anywhere in the canvas. It's gonna, you know, Adobe uh, Illustrator kind of puts like Latin text there, so you see where you're typing. I'm just gonna type AW. I have AW typed. Obviously, I don't like that font. First of all, it's really small, so I'm gonna make it bigger. Um, do me a favor. Go to Window, uh, Window, Type, and select Character. The shortcut is Apple T. Now, guys, I've been using Adobe Illustrator for years, so I, I, I don't know it. a lot of stuff from the menu. I just know the shortcuts. So you should always kind of get familiar with the shortcuts if you can. So if you were to go to, like, type character, you see that on the right side, um, that uh, icon is uh, Command or Apple T. You just press that, and then it'll bring it up. So now I have my little window here for my fonts. Let's just put that right there. It's really small, but I want to make it bigger. So you see where it says 12 points right here on the, on the lower left side? Let's make it 72. Actually, that's, really, that's still small. Let's just do 200. Boom. I like that. But I don't, I don't like this font, so I'm going to choose a different font. So I select from the drop-down menu, and let's look for a cool font. Mm. See, a lot of the default fonts aren't that cool. Actually, all right, let's do let's do Trajan because we're here at USC and we're going to do something cool. So now I have my font here, but it's it's literally just a font. I can't really manipulate it right now at this point because I literally just typed it. It's just two letters. So what I want to do is I want to start manipulating it. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Object and I'm going to hit Shape, Convert to Shape. So I, 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 I make it a shape. Watch what it does. Sorry. Yeah. All 
object convert shape object not converted I don't know why it's not letting me convert these fonts let me try a different font see if it lets me convert it's not letting me convert interesting oh there we go okay I got it sorry guys alright so here's here's how we're gonna do it I don't know why it wasn't letting me convert I thought it was like something for a second that it was because it was licensed font it wouldn't let me convert the font but the shortcut is command shift O it's create outlines sorry it's create outlines so what we're gonna do is where's create outlines I gotta find it okay type so we're gonna take the the font and convert from a type font to an object which is basically outlining it so what we'll do here is we click on it we select it we go to type and we go to create outlines now watch what happens it, it's become an object so I can manipulate it so if I want to uh, manipulate the letter W I have to select the white arrow here because I just want to select the W not the A I'm gonna leave the A where it is I just want to select the W so I hit the white object I, I deselect by clicking off so nothing is selected and then I just click the W with the white arrow selected now what I want to do is I'm gonna drag it over here on top of my A it's kind of getting what I like not exactly there but it's I'm starting to combine them so now I'll, I'll click back the black arrow center it a little bit because they're both selected now I have to go in here and manipulate it zooming in here just so you guys can see as you can see these angles are a little off these angles are a little off what I want to do here's what I want to do see this this the right side of the A I, I want that to be this left side of the W so it's like the A is combining with the W right I want to do that I'll show you how to do that I have to basically delete the points because I have to rem I have to remove this I have to remove this somehow I have to delete it get rid of it now there's two ways to do it there's an easy way that's really quick and then there's another way it's a little harder and it takes forever so I'll show you two ways just remember in Adobe whether it's Photoshop or Illustrator there's a million different ways to do one thing here's two ways uh, you go to your pointer tool your pen tool it's called delete anchor point these are called anchor points these little squares so I literally, because um, I'm I want to delete them, I literally just start clicking them. But you have to zoom in because sometimes if you click the wrong area, this dialog box will come up and say you can't delete that. So it has to be these points. So I'm deleting these points. See, now slowly, slowly it's, 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 it's going away, right? So, almost there. Okay, that's that's pretty cool. That's that's enough. Because then I could just drag it over. Wow. So now I start having my. Now I start having kind of what I want, right? That's kind of cool. That that was a, a kind of a repetitive way to do it. If you guys want to undo something, it's just like Microsoft Word. Just hit Command Z undo. Here's another way to remove this shape I'm gonna go back to my pen tool and I'm gonna draw I'm gonna draw by clicking by clicking paths around the area that I want to delete so you see this black box right it's on top it's on top of the A so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the A with the uh, direct select tool, this is the white arrow, just the A. I'm gonna hold shift because I also wanna select the object. 
Anytime you want to select two objects at the same time, you hold Shift. Go to Window, Pathfinder. You see this? Okay. There is a little icon here that has an empty box on top of a solid box. If I click that, it removes anything that was on top of it. It just so the, the bottom box, the thing that was the layer that was below it is what I'm removing. So that gone. That's how easy it was. And then I just take that uh, piece of the A and I drag it over to where I wanted it on my letter. And I have my AW. So now we, th those are two ways to make it. So now that I have this object here, I'm pretty satisfied with it. I'm going to start applying it to, I have my business card over here, right? So I have my logo. It's going to go on the front of my business card. I'm going to copy it and paste uh, command C, command V. That's in, in Word. I'm sure it's the, it's the same here. So use those shortcuts if you want. Um, and so I want to make it smaller because it's too big. It's way too big, right? So I hold shift, hold shift, and I drag the corners. Because now I've maintained the aspect ratio, the proportions of my logo. Because if you don't hold shift and you just drag it, this is what happens. Ooh, I don't want to do that. So I want to hold shift, drag it. That's my business card right there. That's the front of my business card. Love it. Now, I want to now now that you have your logo shape, you can start exploring with colors. Let's get a good USC color. Something like this maybe. That's kind of cool. Um, also, guys, remember we talked about um, you, I, you looked at like the Michael Kors logo. The Superman S, they, sometimes they're contained in, in, in shapes. Let's say I wanted to put a circle on this. I decided, let me go back to the logo now that I'm thinking about it, right? I'm thinking, you know what? The AW is cool, but what happens if the AW was like in a circle? So we'll just draw a circle. So you see the rectangle uh, icon here? Hold that down, and then you'll see ellipse tool. Select that. Now I have my tool that I want to create my shape with which is a circle so if I just drag you'll see I can create some sort of shape right but I don't want a oval I don't want to do that I want a perfect circle so all I have to do is just hold shift down once I hold shift down it's gonna give me a perfect circle but it's uh, filled I, I only want the outline so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna swap from it being filled to it being an outline. All I gotta do is just hit this icon. But but this this outline is too thin. It's too thin. So we need to increase that. Do you see on the very top it says stroke? This is actually called stroke. So I'm just gonna increase it. Let's go to 10. Yeah, I like that. That looks really cool. So now I have my initials in a circle. Now the thing is, I've created multiple objects. This is when we get advanced. This is like the last thing we're going to do. I have one object here, which is the A. I have another object here, which is the W. And then I have three objects this is the circle they're all separate but I want it to be one because if I want to change colors let's say I want to go yellow it just changes the one I want everything to change so we're gonna highlight all three so all we do is drag we drag and select all three objects now we go to object we go to path, outline stroke. So now that my outline is an actual 
uh, object and not just a stroke. Everything is still selected. Remember the Pathfinder tool uh, window that we pulled up? So the first icon are two solid squares. That means that you are combining objects. So all I do is hit that. Now I have one. One object. So when I want to change the color blue, everything changes. So it's one object. So now I have one object. And now I want to go back to my I want to go back to my business card that I'm going to create. And I'm going to put that in front of my business card. I like this one better. That's cool. But I don't like the white background. I don't like the white background. I would probably do let's do another color. So I want to what I want to do is I want to draw a rectangle that's the same size of my business card. Let's do green, it, but it's on top. I want to put it behind. So right click on the object and hit arrange, kind of like in PowerPoint, and hit send it back. Boom. Now that's like going to be my business card. The last step. So it was on top or before that. Right click. And I just hit, uh, oh, sorry. Right click on, you select it, you se first select it, right click on it and hit arrange. And then hit send back and then it goes behind it. You see that? You see that? Cool. So now we have like an hour. Perfect. The rest of the hour, you're going to spend creating your monogram out of a font, or you're going to create a logo based off of an image or something, or an, you just want to type your name. And then use the file that I sent you, and I'll come around to each and every one of you guys and help you if you have issues. Ready, set, go. Ready, set, go. Question. I have a problem with the writing. Team. Oh, and guys, please try to use your mouse if you can, because it's going to be a pain in the butt. Um, like figuring out the clicks and stuff. Believe me, I know. Yeah, I don't know why it's going. You want to type? Yeah. Okay, make sure you select this layer. Okay. You're going to be working so on this layer. Yes, it has to be oh. highlighted. Right? Now look, now I can just click. Right. So you type a letter and then Okay, Turn that off. Your design can keep on. Keep on. Oh, did you move you move this down? Right? You move it, you move this down? Okay. Let me start you over. Um, can you um, open, close it and open it back up? Don't say it, don't say it. Open, open it. Okay. So turn that off. Yep. And I click this. Design. Now you now you're working on this. Okay. So now zoom in here. If you guys want to zoom, zoom in, you guys know how to zoom in, you go Command Plus, or you just click the Zoom tool on the bottom right of the panel, and then you zoom in. So now you're going to be working. So now you click. Yep. Click. Now. Oh, so you did something. So when you click that, just, just hit it. Because sometimes, see, now it works. Because sometimes when you drag, it thinks you're creating a text box. Uh -huh. So it just created a text box. Uh -huh. yeah, so, yeah, you can move it. I'll show you the map. Uh, you better cl click the black. Yep, and you're going to go on. Yep. And then, so small, then you just want to go type in 200. Oh, okay, cool. And then, 
done with that. Click the flap. Now you can drag it. See? Question? Do you like separate two letters? You want to separate two letters? Yeah. Good, good question. You know, here's another thing which we didn't really talk about. But a lot of times you guys are probably typing both of the letters at the same time. You could type just each letter by itself. So I just want A. So I typed A. After I'm done typing it, I want to click the black arrow so it's set. Okay? Now I just have my A set. And I can type, I can type again my W. And I want to set that. So I'll click the black arrow again. Now I have two separate images. So let's say I wanted to do something cool like this. I drag the W underneath the A. Right? It's kind of cool. I guess it could work. It looks like the Vera Wang kind of thing. So what? I could just select both of these. See, see, I drag over it and I select both of them. I just drag it to the center. I'm not done with it. I would probably manipulate it by... So let's just say I like these the way they are. Do you guys remember how to create the object? So I select both of them. I go to... Um, where were we? We were... Where did we go? Type. Create outlines. Right? Type create outlines. Now it's an object. What I would do is maybe maybe I would do it like that. I would put the A there. So it's like A-W. But I don't like the bottoms. Actually, I just, I just like the crossbar. It's right there. I don't like the bottoms. So what I'll do is I'll remove the bottoms. By drawing an object on top of it, remember... And then I select both of the objects, and with my Pathfinder, I delete it. And I put it right here. But I got to zoom in a little bit. Try to fit it. But it's sticking out. This little piece is sticking out. So what I can do is I can go and delete those anchor points, remember? So I delete the points. There's another point there. Delete that. Delete that. Oh, what is that going to do? Now, I didn't want to get too advanced with you guys, but if you want to move the point, you hold shift, and you see when I hover over the point, it says anchor. I click that. I click it, and I can move it. I can move it wherever I want. But what I need to do is I need to move it over towards the towards the left because that's where the on the letter the W that's where the part was the thinnest see so now it's starting to look refined it's starting to look even but that's like advanced stuff 